Alrighty, got my home theater PC out uh, because I want to upgrade the RAM. Um, this thing is a Ryzen 2200G, but it's running 8 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz DDR4 RAM. I've mentioned before that that's kind of slow for what these APUs would like, uh, especially when they're running integrated graphics. And uh, so, yeah, I picked up this uh, ADATA XPG. Um, their packaging sucks because it looks like a, the big number eight there. <laughs> but when you look at it closely, it says 8 GB times 2. This is a 16 gigabyte kit. It's 3200 megahertz. I don't know if we're going to hit 3200 megahertz on a 2200G. It might, you know, only run at 3000. But um, either way, it's going to run faster than 2400 megahertz. Uh, so, yeah, we'll uh, throw that in and uh, run some benchmarks, see, um, see how much better it runs. Alrighty, I figured I would do this now while DDR4 is still cheap. Uh, this was like $70 Canadian for 16 gigabytes. And so we will take out... This, I think, is G-Skill, if I remember correctly. G-Skill Rip Jaws. Uh, again, 2400 megahertz. This is two 4 gigabyte sticks. Obviously, running in dual channel mode. So we are upgrading to 16 gigabytes. Um, two gigabytes was shared for the video. So with 8 gigabytes of RAM, we actually had 6 gigabytes usable for the system. And now we're bumping up to 16, so we'll have 14 usable for the system. But also, more importantly, it's at a higher clock speed. I'm not, like, super concerned with how much better this is going to run, um, as long as I know that it's running better. Um, I really, I'm just going to run one benchmark, and uh, I didn't think about which benchmark to run, and I'm going to run the original Tomb Raider uh, remake. Uh, main reason, just because it's a slightly older game, but it's still somewhat graphically demanding. And I don't think, well, that game is not going to use more than, I, I think it's safe to say, even the 6 gigabytes of RAM. We're talking about a game that started on the PS3. It's a system with 512 megabytes of RAM, and that's shared with the video. Um, I think it's 256 megabytes <laughs> of uh, system RAM, and 256 megabytes of video RAM, which is insane if you think about it. Um, so yeah, that game was definitely not pushing as far as the amount of RAM goes. Um, I don't really want to test the fact I'm going from 8 to 16 as much as the fact I'm going from 2400 megahertz to hopefully 3000 or 3200 megahertz maybe. And uh, so yeah, we'll run the Tomb Raider benchmark and we'll see what kind of difference we get. All right, so I'm running the benchmark again at 720p high. Now I did have to tweak my timings because I tried to run the RAM at XMP profile 3200 megahertz and it failed and then I had to go to manual, set it to 3000 megahertz. But then the timings defaulted to like CL20 and it's rated for CL16, uh, uh, but that's at 3200 megahertz. So at 3000 megahertz, I actually set it to CL15 um, I believe I went 15, 18, 18, um, instead of uh, 16, 20, 20, and it seems to be stable. So just something to keep in mind, if you're not running XMP profile, if you're manually setting your uh, clock speed, um, don't forget to manually set your timings. And here we go. So we went from 61 to 64 on the minimum. Sorry, from 62 to 64 on the minimum. From 108 to 110 on the max. And from 81.8 to 85.3 on the average. So the average went up about 4 frames per second. Um, at 80, uh, 81 to 85, which about a 5 or 6% uh, performance gain. So... In this one particular game, we got a 5 to 6% performance gain. Realistically, just from changing the memory clock speeds or the memory timings, I don't think so much from 
the fact we also went from 8 gigs of RAM to 16, but again, I don't think in this game that made much of a difference. I would say that's all right. And, you know, it's hard to say in some games, in some emulators, perhaps in a Wii emulator or a GameCube emulator, we might see more of a gain. I don't know. This is just one game I tested. And again, I'm not so much testing going from 8 to 16 gigs of RAM. Obviously, that is a going to be a, an improvement in certain things. And that's and also a bonus, obviously, or an improvement or whatever you want to call it. An upgrade. A notable upgrade to go from 8 gigs to 16. But I more so wanted to focus on, again, um, clock speed and timing um, differences. So... Again, that's just one game. It's an older game. Perhaps in newer games, we would see even more of an improvement. But a 5 to 6% performance improvement, just from changing clock speeds and timings, yeah, not bad. I mean, I honestly expected a little bit more, but maybe my expectations were too high. Um, none, nonetheless, we, we do see an improvement. And I think more importantly, it's a reminder to uh, to check your timings. And yeah, because again, it defaulted to CL20 on a stick that is rated for CL16. And again, that's at 3200 megahertz. Because I'm running it only at 3000, I went to CL15. Could I try for CL14? Fuck it, let's try for CL14. But wait, there's more. There's a little more to this story. There's a little more to this video regarding my home theater PC being upgraded than what was shown here. I actually had considered upgrading the APU from the Ryzen 2200G to the 5600G. Um, I saw these at work. I saw the price. They've really dropped over the last little while. I've I want to say these were $350 at one point, Canadian, and now they're down to like $219 or something like that. Um, very impressive at this price, and so this caught my eye, and I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe I'll start playing some more games on my home theater PC, and it'll be worth upgrading, uh, you know, a couple new generations. Um, I knew the 5600G was still Vega. But it's at least two generations newer. And I say at least two because you really went from the 2200G to the 3200G. And then from the 3200G to the 5600G. There's no 54 or 5200G. And the 4000 series kind of got skipped by um, the DIY. They're like OEM only. So, I mean, technically you did have, I think, like a 4600G. <clears throat> So it's almost like two or three uh, generations apart. And knowing that, okay, it's still Vega, you figure a couple generations worth of, you know, maybe there's more GPU cores in the, uh, in the APU or maybe the GPU clock speeds have risen uh, so much that it's going to make, you know, I was kind of expecting like a 30% gain on IGB on iGPU performance going from a 2200G to a 5600G but I looked into it and it's really not it's like 5% 6% in most games I saw in some games at some resolutions maybe a little higher than that but kind of disappointing and you're always being bombarded with videos telling you how great the new uh, iGPUs are in the new Ryzen APUs, and again, I really underestimated the 2200G, thinking that it's several generations behind, thinking that, of course, the newer ones are going to be a lot faster. The 5600G, as far as the CPU performance goes, first of all, you're going from four cores to six cores, 12 threads. 
But just the IPC, you're going from like Zen 1 or maybe Zen Plus to Zen 3. The, as a CPU, the 5600G is a lot faster than the, than the 2200G. But just looking at the iGPU performance, it's barely any better, which is kind of pathetic, to be honest. That's kind of sad that we can have two, two and a half, even three generations apart and only have a five or six percent performance gain in the iGPU. The desktop iGPUs are not getting the same kind of attention as the mobile. In the mobile, you can get um, iGPUs or APUs with um, RDNA 2 in them. And again, these 5600Gs are still Vega. So yeah, I, again, I saw this at the price it was at and, and I considered it. And that CPU would be able to run the RAM at the full 3200 megahertz speed. And, you know, I thought it would be a big, you know, 30% gain in iGPU performance. And then when I saw what it really was, I was just like, well, forget that. <laughs> it's not worth 200. And if you needed the CPU power, sure. If you needed six cores, sure. For a light gaming machine that you're just going to play some older games on, it didn't make any sense. Um, so scrap that idea. But again, if you look at it from the point of view that I was underestimating the 2200G, um, the the performance gain I didn't get in the RAM was already impressive to me in how well it performed before the RAM was swapped. Again, I went into this benchmark running Tomb Raider reboot at low 720p. <laughs> And it ran way too fast, so I ended up going to high at 720p, and um, I started playing it and just having fun. Um, and at 720p, I thought it looks pretty good. On high 720p, it looks better than this game would look on a PS3. Maybe as good as it looks on a PS4, arguably. It does not look soft from where I'm sitting on a 55-inch TV. It does not like I wouldn't believe it was 720p if you told me so, uh, and maybe maybe my TV's doing something, you know, enhancing the image or something. Um, I'm not in game mode, surprisingly, <laughs> which I noticed. But um, but anyways, the the point is I'm starting to play games on it, and um, I haven't for so long, and I I keep saying it's because it doesn't have a GPU in it, and that's. You know, it's not meant for gaming. It's my home theater PC, but it's not it's not because it doesn't have a GPU in it. And yes, I've underestimated the 2200G a little bit in comparison to the, you know, 3200G, 3400G, 5600G, 4600G. But not so much in terms of what it is overall. I've always known, obviously, that the 2200G has a really good iGPU in it. I just have this other thing where it's like, to me, the TV and playing games with a controller is for consoles. And the fact is, I'm playing Tomb Raider reboot here with like a Super Nintendo style 8-bit dough controller. And it's the first time I've ever played this Tomb Raider reboot with uh, a controller. I've played all three of the Tomb Raider reboots on my PC sitting at the desk with a keyboard and a mouse. It's the first time I've ever played any of these Tomb Raider reboots with a controller. And again, the truth is I'm having fun. Um, as far as running around and jumping and drawing the bow uh, with the L trigger, it's all very fun. When I go to aim, yes, I miss the mouse. <laughs> I certainly aim a lot better with the mouse. And, you know, even with auto aim on, by the way, in the Tomb Raider reboot, in this Tomb Raider game anyways... As soon as I started playing with a controller, auto-aim was on. Whereas when you're playing with a mouse, it's not. You don't need it. I can headshot guys all day long pretty damn easily with a mouse. And I'm not used to that with a controller. I don't play a lot of first-person shooters with a controller. Even though it's a third-person shooter, I should say. It's still that the idea of aiming. Uh, I'm never going to be as good aiming with a controller, with a joystick, than I would be with the mouse. But again, as far as walking around, running around, jumping, 
uh, it's fun. I'm having a lot of fun playing this. And so uh, part of me, again, wants to maybe play more games on my home theater PC, give the 2200G, um, you use it a little more. Um, again, it's my home theater PC. I use it every day for Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, Disney+. Plus. It does 4K video playback all day long on that little 2200G, <laughs> but I just don't play games on it, and, you know, I'm starting to realize maybe I should, um, you know, play some older games like this with a, with a controller and just, just have fun with it. So that's what I'm doing, and <laughs> yeah, I, long rants about the really the stagnation of AMD's iGPUs on the desktop. They've been really pushing on the laptop, on the mobile side, getting RDNA, RDNA 2 uh, into the APUs. And meanwhile, the desktops are still on Vega. And personally, I would love to see like a 65 watt uh, APU running uh, RDNA 2 could do some in incredible things considering what they're doing on laptops. I mean, look at the Steam Deck. Again, that's I think 25 watts. With RDNA 2. Imagine a desktop 65 watt, 75, 85 watt APU with RDNA 2 in it. It could do incredible things, but they're really holding it back. I know RDNA 2 APUs are, are coming to the desktop, I think, probably with AM5 next year, early next year. But uh, yeah, it just, it's, again, it was kind of, uh, it was. I, I was going to say disappointing, and yeah, it's slightly disappointing, but more than anything, it was just surprising for me to look at a 2200G versus a 5600G, uh, looking at game benchmarks and only seeing, you know, a 4 or 5% <laughs> performance gain. In some games, it wasn't even that. It was 1% or 2% in a lot of games. Um, so... So, yeah, I guess that's it. Anyways, we had fun looking at the home theater PC. Again, it needs to be dusted, and I will dust it out. Uh, and I had a blast playing Tomb Raider on it with the freaking controller. Oddly enough, a SNES-style controller of all things. Who would have ever thought? <laughs> Anyways, that's it. See you guys later.